film. I became deaf shortly after. And I want to describe, I, I was born hearing. I had never met a deaf person ever. I had never been exposed to signing at all. I had no idea what it was like to be deaf. Um, and when I was 21, I got into a motorcycle accident. And when I woke up the next day, I was deaf. So my family was very supportive of me. And my friends were very supportive. So I had a great background behind me. really honestly I really wasn't expecting to have an ongoing hearing loss and the doctor had no idea how long I was going to be deaf for he just said that it was going to diminish it was primarily from the accident and he said that there was a head injury and then he said later that it would diminish So he kept telling me that it would go away soon. So I was expecting, I was not expecting that I would have hearing loss for as long as I have. So how I became famous, I really don't know how. I don't know. I remember it was a Sunday in March of 1988, and this was the board was deciding to pick a deaf president. So they were having a press conference, and it was a big room in DC, and the room was filled with people. There was cameras all shining in my face, and so someone asked me a simple question. <laughs> And all the press people were very, very supportive of me. There was overwhelmingly positive support. And someone had asked me, so even if we require deaf education, what would it mean? How, as you as a deaf person, can do this? And I, that question really struck me. And I said, what can a deaf person do? And everyone came, cheering with excitement. So that moment really impacted me. So I knew that if you can believe in deaf people can do anything, and you can believe people can do anything. <laughs> For other people, or meeting other people, oh. So the first thing I would require is being honest. I remember a long time ago someone had told me to always be honest because if someone had found out that you were lied about something, that would be terrible. So that's why I've always been honest. <coughs> so I've always been taught that if you believe in something strongly enough, other people will believe it too. And they will follow you. <gasps> and sometimes you can get a whole group of people together and they, if it's important and it will help them and support other people, then you can believe that too. So I really, I really believe that deaf people, they are not encouraging or aggressive. They're not showing that aggressive aggression. I just think it's a smaller group that way back then in the 1960s and the 1970s, there were discussions that people were there to harm us. And I just know that my community is very proud 
and I, I knew that, you know, I was deaf, so I could believe that too. So, honestly, I, I would, I'll confess, I wish I had gone to a better high school than I did. So, when I was about a sophomore, or a freshman, I was very smart. And I went to school with my sister. She wore, she, my, I used to rebel in high school and my sister was, she worked very hard and one day she scolded me and I thought, I am not like that. So I finished school, went to college, then I became deaf. And after I became deaf, I feel like I went back to high school and got a degree and just began to want to continue learning. And now I'm wondering, how do I level up? How do I become more successful? So I thought maybe getting an education or a degree would help me continue that. So do you mean I can change the world? Yeah, anything. So peace and war. Really? I am still being active and still asking the people some really serious issues and really think hard about those. So think about these issues and think, why are we doing this? And how can we stop it? Sometimes I think that some of these problems are just made up by other people. And that's what I would do to stop the war. Hmm. So my whole life, I think that maybe family, in my family growing up, their experience is just really, really by occurrence. My family has grown ever since I've become in here. It's just really special, especially with my wife, my kids. And one time I took them to a camp, or I took them to Paris. My kids, they were six and seven at the time. It was really cool. And that trip to Paris, I will remember for the rest of my life. I love traveling. I love um, last year I turned 70. So every Sunday
my family and friends went to San Francisco. And that was really fun. And we went there to celebrate my birthday. And it was a really positive experience that everyone could go with me. And I could get into the community over there. It just was phenomenal. And my birthday, everyone there was telling me, happy birthday, happy birthday. It was so fun. Excuse me, he was very involved with running and marathons. He had run at least 38 miles. Really, I love racing, but I'm not very good at it. And baseball, I can't really jump for basketball, but football, oh yeah, I I can run. I'm very focused and I love action. So I think technology has really altered or changed the world. And especially you see it in people, especially deaf people who use uh, technology for different modes of communication and you know growing up for me there was really no VRS or captioning or interpreters even being used and everything but now you see it every day and you see people volunteering to interpret with no certification or training so my advice for people is to not take advantage of deaf people for that service. I think now you should have, even now in movie theaters and theaters, they have captioning glasses, which is great. I think that should happen everywhere. And now, a lot of plays here, there's a lot of interpreters, so I think that's great. So still, I think that having pride can really impact a deaf individual. <laughs> so, I'm deaf. And I think some people believe that I can be fixed. And I, me personally, I don't want to tell a deaf individual how they have to do things because growing up people, and especially deaf people, had trouble with a lot of pride. Hmm. What do you call my everyday life? Maybe that it's just no big deal and you work hard. So especially about running, that, that's tough and takes a while. Um, and communication, especially like with lectures and planning for that. <laughs> That's hard. So I wake up every day with a goal and a goal to work hard. That's my goal every day. So honestly, again, it's no big deal. I just don't expect, I didn't expect to be deaf forever, but my father, he, very, he valued the importance of getting out and doing things. So when I went away for school, 
I worked and worked. And my family wanted a formal education for me. So growing up, my family expected you to go to college. So I never finished high school. And then they expected me to go to a college, but that was really hard when I had not finished high school yet. So I had an active involvement in the church. And these people in the church um, were involved in higher education. And they helped me get back into it. Whew. I remember I've always been an honest person. I've always believed that action and support would help you believe in yourself. And personally, my behavior, my communication. I've always had that connection to the deaf community when I found out I was deaf. And ever since I've been in that, that's really shaped who I am. Oh, wait, one more minute. Uh, I can do more. <laughs> so I have two children. And when they were born, I was like, wow. So now I have a baby daughter. And that was the most, that was the greatest memory that I have. And then the second memory was when I became president. I was not expecting to become president. And when I stood up and everyone was supporting me in that crowd, <laughs> it made me believe I could do anything. And, and they still picked me after that night. And in the morning, a week later, I was touched that I had this opportunity, that I had the, the ability to do this. Hmm. So when I became president, it was really tough. I feel like I, people wanted, expected things from me and the community expected things from me that I couldn't describe. And there was only one kind of I you know, I didn't sign ASL, I signed more I was growing up oral. I I had some doubts about myself and about about what deaf people wanted from me. I think there's a lot, but I really do enjoy telling you more about my senior high school experience. And I really think that you'll go far from this interview. Yep. My pleasure. <laughs>